So welcome to this week's Precision Podcast, and I'm joined again by Susan Nightingale. Susan's a senior neurophysio uh, with many years experience, and we're here today to talk about balance and specifically uh, age-related decline in balance. Uh, and so that's because, uh, you know, the, the, the clock's ticking, Susan. I had a birthday <laughs> yesterday. Today, <laughs> uh, still older than me, though. Oh, well, thanks for reminding me. <laughs> oh dear. So, uh, so thanks for your time today. Let's get right into it and talk about uh, this um, balance, really, and and uh, why it's so important that we look after our balance. Yeah. Well, obviously, balance is a is a key key aspect of movement, a key aspect of mobility. If we haven't got good balance, then we're going to be far more susceptible to falls and trips and slips. And obviously at different times of the day, if we haven't got good balance, it will become more apparent. So in a daytime where you've got good lighting, you've got your glasses on, you can see everything, you're going to be less likely to have any trips, slips or falls. Whereas in the evening time, if you're a bit groggy, if anyone has to get up during the night to the loo, that's a classic time for someone to have a fall. And, um, you know, obviously that can apply to people in an older age, you know, or people at a younger age. So in the evening time, you could be walking along pavements, not so well lit. Uh, there could be potholes, things that aren't mended. And we're just not as, if your balance isn't as good, you'll notice then that you might just go over your ankle. You might twist your ankle. You might have something like that. You might fall, end up breaking something by outstretched hand it's not just the abs it's not the older person who you think of that might have a hip fracture but it could apply to younger people as well so yeah. that's why balance is so important and I think quite often in training regimes it's slightly overlooked mm, no I think you're quite right um, and, and maybe that's because people think it is uh, in the domain of, of older people but absolutely you know, in my career as a musculoskeletal physio, if I had a pound for everybody who fell over the dog. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, so, that, so that's saying, uh, and people trip over their cats and dogs and mats and stairs and they miss a step or they've had a few drinks and that might impair your balance and then you have a fall, you know, all sorts mm. of things. Yeah, so it's really important that we, uh, we are aware that as we get older, balance is something that, uh, begins to become compromised and there's a different reasons why this happens uh, the first one that I was going to talk about was muscle strength because uh, that's obviously something that I'm particularly interested in helping people with uh, with the Pilates that I teach and so having strong muscles is going to help you uh, to uh, be less inclined to fall particularly the core muscles I think uh, they're the muscles that are going to save us if we trip over something inadvertently and uh, they're the, the muscles that will kick in to try and help us recover our balance and hopefully uh, you know that will work um, <laughs> and so then if you did end up on the floor being well muscled actually around the shoulder for instance uh, around the hip is going to to go some way to protect you when you do if if in the event that you were to fall over um, and so keeping the the body well muscled uh, is something that I'm really passionate about helping with people with uh, because you know we we know that as we get older the muscles do go into a decline we lose muscle mass and so uh, you know we just have to work that bit harder at keeping the muscles strong yeah yeah uh, don't we so uh, so the other thing that uh, that happens of course is that the the visual inputs change as we get older that uh, and i mean i oh my goodness since i've had to use very focals i really think they should come with a health warning because <laughs> <laughs> you know it changes how the world looks especially when they're new uh, yeah. it, you know, that that really does affect uh, your perceptions, doesn't yeah. it? The, yeah, wob wob wobbly floors. I remember trying to mop the floors in my very focals, and they feel like you're going up and down hills when they're clearly not there. But yeah, yeah you're, you're 
the part of your brain that controls your vision, your occipital lobe, it's huge. And we have to take a huge amount of visual input into all our motor activities like walking, running, active, moving around the house, whatever. And we are an awful lot of the time, we don't realize how much our eyes are moderating our movements. Um, and that's why in the evening time when less light, it's harder to differentiate where surfaces are and get that perception. Um, and that's why falls are, are more likely to happen then because we just yeah. don't have the sharpness of it. Um, and again, when you're exercising, what's really important is to make sure that you're trying to do exercises, not looking at your feet and have a go at doing the, you know, how much harder is it to do some of the, the poses, the archer pose, um, uh, any of the standing on one leg, those sorts of activities, you know, them much better than I do. But, um, you know, with your eyes shut, you know, half the class fall over. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I know from, from my own perspective, it definitely gets more challenging uh because i'll be standing at the front of the class on one leg and then i'll be trying to look around at what people are doing so the fact that mm -hmm. then you're moving your head uh and the the vision field is moving around the room that really adds challenge to your balance and uh, yeah and so sometimes you know this tendency that we would have uh, our you know our default strategy uh, as human beings is avoidance it, mm -hmm. We just take, we take that strategy with just about everything. And so if you feel wobbly, you know, you will begin to fix on a spot with your eyes, won't you? Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, yeah. And so actually we, we want to encourage uh, people, of course, they want to be safe in their environments, don't they? Mm -hmm. But to yeah. encourage them to just take the visual field and move it around a a bit more when they are doing uh, balance sort of challenges so have you have you done uh, balance training sort of programs with people yeah so so quite often um certainly with them um, elderly patients there were lots of sort of different little tests you could do one of the nice little tests you had where you made like a little cross on the ground with walking sticks very high tech and you can see whether they can do a four step walking test so they have to step forward sideways backwards and back to the side and you see how often they can do that and how well they can do it and you can just do your basic standing on one leg for 30 seconds you can see how that is you can do you know even um the simple things like when they stand up how far apart are their feet just trying to bring that in a bit closer it doesn't have to be as difficult as standing on one leg and then obviously progress them to what we call tandem step can they put one foot in front of the other can they do um, with the opposite leg as well so you're challenging both systems um lots of different lots of different little tips like that and always making sure that they're looking straight ahead you know and if they can do it can they do it with their eyes shut so you know it's it's very simple things but it's it's interesting how how people just don't realize how much they accommodate and change mm -hmm. you know so they'll they'll put their hand out a bit to give them a bit more balance or they have their feet out a bit wider, or their eyes, as you say, fixed to a point, the, these sorts of things. And, and it is just all about um, trying to rehab them, trying to get more sensory awareness of where they are, really looking on that so that if you take the vision out of it, you're far more reliant on, on the information that your joints are giving you, that your skin's giving you, that your vestibular system and your ears giving you. So using all those um, sensory processes to try and drive an improvement. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's interesting. You talk about uh, those mechanisms and we call that proprioception a lot of, uh, certainly for joints anyway, you, your joints yeah. have sensors within them and those sensors send messages to the brain to tell you where you're positioned in space. Um, and so the less we challenge these systems, then yeah. uh, the less resilient they become uh, gen as a general rule of thumb, isn't it? So, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, that's the hardest part really is particularly, I mean, balance, the, there's lots of different uh, reasons why people might lose the balance, uh, but we're talking specifically about uh, age related decline, which is, you know, something that potentially happens to all of us if we're lucky enough to, yeah. <laughs> to live to a ripe old age. Um, you know, it, we're not talking about the room spinning 
or yeah. uh, you, know, you know those kinds of things just the fact that we start to exist in a, a smaller and smaller bubble or we take less and less risks and you as you say you become totally uh, oblivious to the fact that you are doing that uh, it, it's so automatic it's a, it's just this automatic thing that happens you challenge yourself less and you know funnily enough i find myself lately walking along looking at the ground and mm -hmm. i'm thinking why i'm not seeing the scenery because no. i'm looking where i'm putting my feet I, yeah. I never used to do that yeah and then when when you sit down to put your pants on you know you've maybe gone a bit too far and you actually have to stand up <laughs> yeah <laughs> when you stop balancing on one leg in that's place. it that's it and you know even i in the morning i'm a bit woolly woolly but you've got to keep at it got to make yeah, it steady it. yeah you know and so like all these things we can get better we can get better and even um, mm -hmm. You know, this decline in the vestibular mechanism, the, the balance mechanism that is in our ears is uh, comprised of these three semicircular canals that are orientated to uh, allow us to tell the difference between forwards, back, side to side and uh, tilting the head so that the mechanism in the ear over uh, through our lifetime becomes less uh, effective. Uh, it's a it's a system that has fluid filled inside within the canals and uh, little hairs then that move and so yeah. i think with age you know the fluid becomes less uh fluidy yeah, it gets a, a bit sticky it gets a bit stickier and sometimes you get yeah. crystals forming that's right and so the the, the balance mechanism is not performing as well mm -hmm. uh, we've got the visual disruption of uh, perhaps uh, you know the, the changes in vision that occur with age and we've got muscle weakness and all of this comes together to to make us uh, potentially at, at risk of having falls and of course you did work with people uh, who were mm. at risk of falling uh, you, but by the time to get to you susan the neurophysio sadly you know it's all gone a bit far hasn't it by then yeah and, that, and that's working you know with somebody that's had a stroke is, is is different than someone who's got um you know just a bit of decreased balance through age-related changes and you would do well yeah no sorry i was referring to the fact that you used to work with all the people who who had falls yeah 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 so so the people that have falls they would go through a program you know lasting 12 weeks and they would maybe attend twice a week and they might aim for them to maybe do things at home and we'd work on trying to strengthen up a lot of it was to do with muscle strengthening specifically around about the ankle joints working on the everters and doing sit stands for their quads and their glutes um and again we had a we had a funky little thing that was like a rainbow and they had to do the reach so they had to practice reaching out with the base of support so where you're mm -hmm. kind of like as if you're reaching to a top shelf something like that um, and obviously you'd, you'd grade it to start with because um quite often people um they have a very narrow point as to where they're going to balance to and reaching beyond even sometimes in sitting you'll get people that wouldn't really reach down to their feet that mm. can be quite a challenge for them mm -hmm. okay we're reaching forward so you might do it in sitting or in perch sitting so they're a little bit less supported or in standing and they'd have to reach to like a rainbow and you imagine reaching out to the higher colors um, oh, so all yeah. these sorts of things and these are things that you can mimic at home by standing at a, at a surface and trying to stretch beyond where you need to yeah, um, and again you've got, this, you've got you, you've got you've got the safety of knowing yeah exactly yeah. stay safe that's the yeah but, you know, that's really important because that you know the difficulty is that you want to push the the envelope uh, yeah. you know if we don't push the envelope if we don't explore the boundaries then we don't get the change and this applies no. generically across the board really and yet of course the last thing you want to do is for people to go falling over so uh, you, you know, it, it can be difficult. You want to be positioned near to something that if you were to yeah. wobble, you could hold on or, yeah. or uh, you know, whatever. So yeah, that, that is important. You reminded me then about the idea that, uh, you know, you're not just strengthening muscles, but that the moving the head 
and the eyes and also the neck because you know I was talking about those canals in yeah. the ear and they're really responsive to movements of the head and so uh, do you know what I uh, not that long ago I tried to do a cartwheel don't Ooh. ask me why I know don't I thought oh I'll do a cartwheel it must have been a sunny day or something well I mean my head was spinning literally uh, because uh, I mean obviously the fluid is getting thicker or more viscous and the hairs are not fluttering around like they used to do in my ears but so you you know that really does put you off wanting to move your head around uh, in a, a vigorous manner but if and you yet, thought but if you think that's you putting your head upside down for a very short period of time well when's the last time you put your head upside down when you're a child at the play park, my children were always upside down, you know, hanging <laughs> off something on the swings, whatever else, lounging on the floor. They couldn't sit in the seat. They'd be upside down in it. Any old way we sit or we stand, you know, mm. and move. And, and it's well, very yeah. often that you don't, you know, unless you go canoeing and you're cat, unfortunate to capsize, I, I bet your head isn't upside down very often. Well, I, I mean, I'm always doing that. The roll down in Pilates takes me okay. with my head in the and yeah, of but, course but, I do yoga, but it's not the same as that rapid. No. no, it's not. But it's not. It's, it's not a rapid free movement. It's fixed. Yeah. You've got a point of yeah. fixation. Yeah. So true. you're getting. So you're getting input from something else. Wow. So I'm going to have to try a cartwheel now. Yeah. Work. Try it. We're, we're not suggesting Ooh. that people should go out and do cartwheels, are we, no. Susan? But no. uh, like, like we, we were saying, balancing uh, either with two feet closer together than you normally would. Uh, one foot in front of the other, perhaps, uh, so as if you stand in a longer tight rope uh, or, or on one leg, and then either and or closing your eyes, yeah. uh, moving the head around as well. The, just as, as simple as that. While the kettle's boiling, yeah. uh, you know, just take a moment to, to challenge your balance a little bit. And, uh, it, you know, it's generally when you do things like that that you begin to realize. Uh, what what you hadn't realized earlier was that perhaps it's not quite as good as it, it used to be um, yeah. and so to intervene sooner rather than later uh, you know yeah. I would say yeah and, and again it's it's great to do things in your bare feet get a lot more tactile stimulation you know so when you're standing brushing your teeth in the morning if you haven't already got your slippers on take them off have a go yeah, yeah, bare feet, because we're getting more messages then, aren't we, through the skin, the receptors yeah. in the skin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's like and, in Pilates, you do a lot of Pilates in your socks, or at least it's not in shoes, so it's, again, no, no. Your, get more stimulation. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So, well, thank you so much for your time today. I really enjoyed this conversation. Let's just, uh, let's just summarise the kinds of things that people can be doing at home to uh to help them uh to help to sort of arrest if you like the the rate of age age related decline in balance uh, so we talked about strengthening muscles and that's key muscles really for balance isn't it you talked yeah. about specifically the ankle everters and those are muscles that that move the ankles outwards yeah outwards yeah. if you were standing uh, so you can do that walking sideways, actually. That's quite a nice exercise, walking sideways. I always recommend walking forwards, backwards and sideways. Just make sure you're not going to bump into anything. Mm -hmm. um, this, this quadriceps you mentioned, a sit to stand sort of uh, exercise. And the other one is, is going as if you're going to sit on a chair, but then don't touch it and just stand up again. Uh, so it's a bit like a squat, isn't it then? Yeah. Yeah. And that's glutes and quads. They're really important muscle groups to, for us to stay strong in the legs. And I mentioned the core muscles because, uh, you know, we know we know that the core muscles respond to displacement of the trunk. And yeah. so they are partly responsible for uh, for us not falling over. And um, and so then it was about um, we were talking about moving your head and your eyes and, 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 you know, not, and pushing the envelope just a little bit so that maybe you do experience the wobble. And I say this to people in my classes, when you wobble, it's your balance getting better, you know, because you, the, the mechanisms will kick in, won't they? 
yeah yeah um, so so really expose yourself to some uh some safe uh challenges as regards and then the visual that was you know maybe we do a bit with the eyes closed yeah uh, balancing yeah. with the eyes closed or moving your head around is the other thing that i do quite a lot with people yeah, yeah. so did you have anything else that you um you thought might be i might have missed no, I think I think it is just the kind of those three three factors, and again, trying to get as much awareness of how much you are focusing on things, even when you go out walking over a curb and things like that. Obviously, don't if you have got a problem with your balance, don't do that one. But just even notice what you're looking at when you're doing things that are a little bit challenged to us, which are going yeah. up and down curbs, up and down stairs, carrying something that makes a difference. So you're looking at the load that you're carrying um just yeah. just being a, just trying to be a little bit more aware of balance because when you think i the thing that i think is amazing about balance is you can get people who can walk a tightrope across niagara <laughs> so you know we really can push it a long way you know but you only yeah. you only did it by getting up on that tightrope you know you didn't you didn't do it any other way you had to actually get on that tightrope and give it a try and um, so that's yeah. how we work on improving our balance I love that. I love that, Susan. And you know what? We're going to end with that. And maybe I'm not going to walk on a tightrope across <laughs> Niagara tomorrow. No. But, uh, but yeah, let's keep pushing the envelope. Let's keep, you know, let's not accept decline if we can avoid it. And no. uh, thank you so much for your time today. And You're we'll welcome. see you again. Thank you.